Today I'm going to show you how to set a square on point. And even though you're just taking a center square and adding triangles to the outside edge, you need to know the, basics, the basic fabric dynamics to make this block successful. Now when you are doing this and do, creating any block like this, if two edges of the triangles are touching the outside edge of the block, then you need to take a large square and cut it in half on the diagonal. And I'll show you why. If, see, in this particular one, I would want these two to be on the outside edge of the block because, can you hear that on camera? That is like sheets in a wind. I know just by picking up this block, or this square, that this was cut parallel to the salvage because there is absolutely no stretch in fabric when it's cut parallel to the salvage. But when it's cut across grain from salvage to salvage, See how it's more of a dull thud? There's a little bit of stretch in the fabric on this way. So what we want to do when we're creating our block is cut our triangles so that these are on the straight of grain because we don't want them to be, have biased edges on the outside because it'll stretch and distort our block. So I can take a square of fabric and this is the bias which is going across the middle of the block and look at the stretch and distortion that can be created. So I don't want this on the outside edge of my block because it's going to distort the entire size of everything I do. So when we're doing this, this is going to be here and this is all on the straight of grain. So since this is on the straight of grain, we take squares and cut them in half and by doing that we're sewing the bias edge to the straight of grain and the straight of grain will stabilize the bias edge and then the outside edges are on the straight of grain, so our entire block will end up being stable. So in order to do this, we're going to take our square, and I fold it in half, and crease the center. So we're going to take it like that, and place our triangles on opposite sides. Now see, the point of the triangle is going to touch right here, and then I can take a pin, because I'm going to use the tip of the pin as my arrow. I'm putting the fabrics right sides together and since this is at least a quarter of an inch away from this edge, I can go ahead and add the other side at the same time. So these are oversized because I always like to give myself a little bit of extra fabric so I can trim it down to size. And once again, I'm going to turn this around so when I go back to sew this, I know I need to sew opposite sides with a quarter of an inch seam. So I've already done that process, and you can see here are the triangles sewn to opposite sides. I've opened it up, pressed the seams open, and now I've got these little tails sticking out. But you can see, see how my corners are now all on the straight of grain? and the only bias is across the diagonal of the center square. Now I just need to cut off these tails and that's because I made them a little oversized and you'll see how easy it is to square that up in a minute. And now I'm going to fold this in half and crease the block once again and see I'm lining up my seams on top of each other. But there is, these are oversized so I have a little bit of room in case it's not perfect. I'm going to open it up and this time I'm going to center them. Again, the point of the triangle is going to be placed on that crease and I'm going to place them on opposite sides of the block and pin them in place and I can sew both of them at the same time. Again, I always pin with the point of the pin facing the seam that I need to sew because this acts like an arrow. So whenever I'm looking at this block, I know exactly what I need to do. 
So now I'm going to go sew a quarter of an inch seam on each side of this. As you can see, I sewed a quarter of an inch seam on opposite sides. I did use a black thread, but once again, that was just so it would show up on camera because I would use a neutral thread that would match the fabrics. And now I'm going to take it to the ironing board and press those seams open. And then we'll show you how to trim down the block. Now I've pressed all the seams open. I'm not worried about any of the threads because now we're going to trim this down to size. So I am going to turn this over. And the reason that this is extending farther than a quarter of an inch from each point is because I made these triangles oversized. But once again, we're going to take the Creative Grids, grid, six and a half inch, squared up and fussy cut ruler, and I'm going to place the horizontal and vertical lines so it goes right through the points of that center square. And you can see that the quarter of an inch seam allowance is exactly beyond those points. So now I can square up this block and I'm going to have a perfect square set on point. I'm going to rotate the block, reposition the ruler so it's a quarter of an inch beyond those two points. And we have a perfect square within a square with our corner of an inch seam allowance on each side. All of the outside edges are on the straight of grain and so the entire block is stable and it'll sew beautifully into your quilt.